everybody, here is a short video about graphing and applied behavior analysis. For this video, our objectives and our agenda are the same. So we're going to talk about the elements of a line graph, and then we're going to talk about how to transfer data to a graph. We graph all of our data in ABA, and we do this for a couple of different reasons. First reason is that it gives us a means for organizing our data during the data collection process. So when you're collecting data, you're typically going to be recording that data on data sheets, which means that you're going to have a lot of data sheets. So organizing all that data and putting it into a graph, that's an overall visual representation of those data, gives us just a really good way to organize everything so we can see what's going on. Second, since we do have that ongoing picture, it allows us to um, have a possible, it allows us to make a formative evaluation as we're providing the treatment or the intervention. So we can always look at the graph and see if our behavior is increasing or decreasing like it's supposed to. And if it's not, that allows us to talk about things and change something. And lastly, it serves as a really good vehicle for communication between um, anybody that's involved with the intervention. So the teachers, the parent, the student, Etc. If we have this really clear graph that has organized the data, that provides a visual representation of what's going on, we can really clearly see what's going on with the learner and the specific behavior that we're taking data on. And it just allows us to communicate better about what's going on between different people that are involved with the interventions. So all these are reasons why we graph all of our data in ABA. Okay, whenever you guys graph, the most common graph that you're going to use is a line graph. And there are some specific components that you need to have. First, you need to have your x and y axes and your axis labels. So, uh, your x axis is at the bottom, that horizontal line at the bottom. And here is your axis label. Typically, your x axis um, shows how frequently data were collected. It's usually a measure of time, so sessions, days, dates, things like that. And you guys can see in this graph, um, the axis label tells us that, and it's measured in sessions. Your y-axis is the vertical line off to the left side of your graph, and here's your label. And your y-axis identifies the target behavior and the kind of data that's being reported. So for this specific example, these are data on two-digit two multiplication problems. And they're problems per minute. So that tells us that they are measuring, these researchers are measuring rate. You also need to have data points, which are uh, these little data points. <laughs> um, and this shows us the measurement of the target behavior per session or per day. You need to have a data path, which are the lines that connect your data points. And your data path allows us to see um, the trend of the data and what direction the data are going in. You know, if you look in this baseline phase, it's pretty pretty leveled off. But if you look in the intervention phase, then you can really see that there's an increase in the trend of the data. You need to have phase lines. So these are lines that separate your different phases. So typically in a line graph, you're gonna have a baseline phase. And this is just when you measure the behavior under natural conditions. So um, how often is the behavior occurring naturally? You implement, a, you put a phase line in to um, demonstrate that you're implementing a treatment. And then you measure the behavior after you implement a treatment or during the treatment. And um, that would be your treatment condition. Then you need to have phase labels. So your phase labels are up here. So your um, somebody looking at the graph can tell which is your baseline phase and which is your intervention phase. And then last, you need to make sure that you identify the which student this data is for. And typically, we do that right over here on the right side. You put their name in a box, and it goes right above the x-axis. So these are all the major components of your graph, um, specifically a line graph. And as you guys can see, it's really clear. There's no color to it. Um, graphs in ABA are typically black and white. There are no grid lines. You want to take those out. There's no line or box around the graph. 
And so it's just really clear and concise so you can easily see the data and easily interpret and visually inspect um, the effectiveness of your intervention. Okay, so now let's talk about taking data and converting it to a way in which you can graph it. So we've talked about all of these different measurement procedures. And here's a description of all of them if you guys need it. And here's the resulting measure. And the resulting measure is what you're actually going to graph. So take event recording, for example. Event recording, remember, it's a continuous recording procedure. So you're going to record each instance of a behavior as it occurs. And when you measure this, you're either going to typically use frequency or rate. Remember, you use frequency if your observation periods are the same amount of time. And if your observation periods are different amount of times, then you want to convert your frequency to rate. And that resulting measure is what's going to go on your y-axis and what you're actually going to graph. And you guys can pause this and go through and look at it. There's information for opportunity recording, all your partial inter all your interval recording and time sampling recording. It describes each of those there, so that should be a review for you guys. And then typically with the interval and time sampling, you're recording percentages of intervals in which the behavior occurred. So if you have 10 intervals and you mark a plus on two of those intervals, then you're going to do 2 divided by 10 times 100, and that gives you 20%. So if you're... Um, if you are doing sessions and the behavior occurred in two out of 10 intervals for session one, you're going to graph a 20% for session one. If it occurred in six out of the 10 intervals for session two, you're going to graph a 60% for session two. And you guys can go look at this. Like I said, duration recording is typically total duration, mean duration, percentage duration, um, latency, total latency, mean latency, permanent product recording, which um, you might use very frequently as a teacher. It kind of varies whether you're doing um, the wound size, number of holes in the wall, number of math problems completed. Um, so that one kind of varies. There's not a set way, there's not a set resulting measure. Um, for permanent product recording. It just kind of depends on the product that the behavior is left in the environment. And um, your book does a really good, I think, way of taking data sheets and converting them to the visual representation of a graph. And I just wanted to kind of go over there, go over a couple of those with you guys, and then you can look back in your book and look at the rest of them. But for event recording, here is a data sheet. This was um, a little boy named Michael, and his behavior was calling out without raising his hand. And the observation period was from 1020 to 11 o'clock a.m. And the experimenter observed um, all these days. And here are the number of instances that the experimenter recorded. So on Monday, she recorded three, Tuesday, one. Um, and you can see them totaled up here. This is a frequency event recording. These are frequency data. You can graph these data because your observation period is the same amount of time on each day that was observed. So when you go over here, your x-axis, they put sessions. You could also put days on here as well, or dates, um, especially since they're observing once on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. A lot of times if you observe multiple times during the day, that's when we typically use sessions. Uh, but either one, sessions or days. And then you can see this is the number of callouts. So number of callouts means frequency data on session one. So on Monday, we had three callouts, session two, one, session three, seven, and you can follow it along. Um, if you do not have an observation period that's the same each time, then remember, you need to convert that to rate. So here's a data sheet from Stephen. Um, they were measuring packet assembly. And so on Monday, they completed, um, he completed 45 in 30 minutes. And so they did 45 divided by 30 and got 1.5. And that's your rate per minute. And so you can see on Wednesday, he completed 40 in 25 minutes. So the amount of time he's doing these is different. So that's why we have to convert it to rate. So you're doing the number completed by the amount of time converting it to rate. And that's what you're going to graph. So over here, they use days. So Monday was day one, Wednesday was day two. And like I said, they're going to graph, your y-axis is going to be the target behavior. So number of packets assembled, and it tells you 
the dimension of behavior, so per minute, and that tells us that it's right. If you see anything, um, number of packets per minute, number of packets per hour, anything per an amount of time, it's going to be right. And so we can see on day one, he um, assembled 1.5 packets per minute. On day two, 1.6 packets per minute, and so on. And you can see these data points and the data paths and kind of see how um, the behavior is increasing as the days go by. <laughs> Here's an example of interval and time sampling recording. So this is during Monday. They had a 20 minute observation period and it was divided into 10 second intervals. So these numbers up here are the intervals and they are measuring talking. So either self-talk or talking to other people. If this was actually, um, I think this was partial interval recording. And so if he recur, so basically if the learner talks at any time to himself or somebody else, then they get an S if he's talking to himself, an O if they're talking to other people. And if the behavior didn't occur throughout the whole interval, they get a minus. So similar to what we did last module, where we put a plus and a minus, but they're just differentiating the plus into self-talk or talking to other people. And so if you look on with your interval and time sampling recording, it's typically the percentage of intervals. And if you guys did the interval recording activities, the partial interval, a whole interval and time sampling recording activities last time, then you actually converted your data into percentage of intervals. So you do the same thing with your graphing. So if we look at Monday and they measured self-talk and other. So if we look at the amount of intervals in which he talked to himself, then we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten divided by twenty, because there's twenty intervals, gives you 0.5, multiply by hundred, and you get fifty percent. So session one, or yeah, sessions into sessions, um, would be fifty for self-talk. If we look at talking to other people. We got one, two, three, four. Four divided by 20 is one over five, which is 0.2 um, times 100 gives you 20%. So that's where you get these two data points. And then you can do that. You can see on session two, which is Tuesday, he has zero out of 20 intervals for other people. So zero out of 20 is a zero. And then for talking to himself, he has one, two, three, four. So four divided by 20, one over five, 0.2 times 100, which gives you your 20, your data point here. And then you connect your data points, get your data path, and you can see what's going on with the trend of the behaviors. And you guys can see, I wanted to point out, um, they're measuring they're, they're measuring talking, but they're two, measuring two different aspects of talking, self-talk and other directed. So when you do that, you can have two data points on your graph. Um, sometimes people have three or four data paths, depending upon which behaviors they're measuring. Okay, so we talked about the purpose of graphing. We talked about the components of a graph, and we talked about how to convert your data onto a graph. And then we talked about some examples. And there are more in your book. Your book does a really good job of taking the data sheets and showing you guys how to take the data from the data sheets and put it on a graph. So please look over there please look over your book. There are examples for permanent product recording, opportunity responding, and everything like that. All right, guys. Um, thank you all so much for listening. If you have any questions, please email me.